Alright guys, today we're going to talk about a folder from Spider Code that I think gets a lot of attention and is kind of, I don't know, it's not super rare, but it is a folder that I think is pretty desirable. A lot of people like it and I myself was drawn to it for a few reasons. So today let's talk about the Spider Co. Smock. All right, so like I said, guys, this is the Spyderco smock, and this is a very intriguing, very unique, and very different design from Spyderco. And the whole thing is just very interesting, in my opinion. I think it's the best way to put it, because I like certain aspects about this knife quite a bit, and there are other aspects I'm not as into. And I will say, initially, when it comes down to the Spyderco smock, these guys are pretty tricky to obtain. They are also, if you buy them, like this version here, the S30V with the carbon fiber G10, uh, which we'll get into in just a little bit, are not super cheap, especially for the materials and the country of origin. Now, this is one of the many knives that, similar to the Spider Co. Spidey Chef, comes out of the Taichung Taiwan facility. And I think initially, when Spider Co. started making knives out of this facility, as opposed to their Golden Colorado um, facility, like this Manix 2 here, they got a lot of flat because they the prices on these spider codes such as the spidey chef and the smock especially are pretty steep they are definitely on par if not more expensive than some of the American offerings now a lot of that has to do with materials as I mentioned and alluded to earlier this is a you know fusion of carbon fiber and g10 for the handles on this guy this spidey chef of course uses full titanium and so some of the um, materials that are used are a little bit more premium than things like standard G10. But at the same time too, it is always a little bit frustrating when you see that. In addition to, I think it's worth pointing out too, just a little bit more with something like the smock is, you know, this knife as you see it, um, granted the pocket clip is not on it, but it will be soon. Um, but this knife from you know, like Blade HQ and stuff, as you see it here, is about $220. And that can be a little bit frustrating because it is just a CPM S30 V edge. Sorry, keep wanting to say S35 VN, but the blade is just CPM S30 V. So it's made in Taiwan with CPM S30 V. Now, for me personally, as I've had many, many debates and talks about steel, I'm not necessarily detracted by ex more expensive knives using CPM S30V. It is an older steel, but it is very well proven. Its flaws and its strengths are very well known. Now, talking about the smock itself, it is a pretty fascinating knife, and the two primary reasons that attracted me to this knife uh, and why I wanted to get it was, first off, it is a very weird um, mechanism for locking. And what I mean by this is, you guys might look at this and say, you know, that's just a button lock you know, knife, right? And it really isn't, because as you can see, I'm depressing it, and it's not really falling out like a proper button lock would. And so, first off, its locking mechanism is a very unique locking mechanism. I think it's really the only knife that features this, but it is essentially a button lock compression lock. So it's kind of hard to see the inner mechanism there, but you guys can see that it does have a compression lock that when pushed in by this button, and this button is physically attached to the leaf spring, so to speak, that controls the lock. So when you push it in, it does function kind of, in the open state, it fun functions more like a normal button lock, but in the closed state, it does not because a normal button lock would release if you pressed it in and dropped it. So it is pretty unique in that regard, but uh, it, it definitely makes for an interesting user interface because unlike on a normal compression lock where you have to reach up and grab it in this potentially unergonomic state, you know, you have to really put your finger up here and close it. This is nice because you have that button that you can just disengage with your thumb. So very user friendly. And I think it also makes for a much cleaner design. And I think that was really the purpose for the smock and why they went with this button was once again, ease of use, but also the clean design. This is a very, very sleek, thin and slim model of knife, unlike many of the other Spyderco's you see here. 
but because if you look at this guy that you know has this compression lock you have to have a cutout exposed for it so that kind of you know makes it a little bit more um i guess it makes it a little less sleek so anyways that is the first reason the second reason is that this guy is a bit of a front flipper so this is kind of one of those interesting ones a lot of flippers are more traditionally back here and while some front flippers are you know more towards the front of the blade like here this one has a little flipper nub or tab right there that works pretty darn well now i will say funny enough after playing with this knife quite a bit it has actually really become more of my favorite to just spidey flick it which is a little bit weird because this is an undersized spidey hole and the spidey hole is accessible but not super accessible as you guys can see there but there still is just enough spidey hole to reliably spidey flick this guy out and so i end up gravitating towards spidey flick in this blade more than actually using the flipper and that's primarily because the flipper while it's not like abrasive to use just doesn't really have any traction so unless you're really on it you can sometimes kind of slip off of it anywho so those are the biggest reasons why i wanted to get it it's very unique very cool and i overall like the aesthetic of it it is very unique looking but it also leans towards that modified warren cliff blade shape and i've been adding a lot of warren cliffs to the blade collection here of late so i dig that and that probably also helps another thing i think that is worth noting that i think is really cool about the spider coast smock is it does have a hollow grind on it and i feel like hollow grinds are just not that prevalently featured really on any blade and i love me a good hollow grind they are so so slicey and this is no exception now let's talk about some of the things i dislike about this blade so far now admittedly i haven't edc'd it too much because i'm still waiting on some hardware to put a clip on this guy and uh, actually carry it but i've been carrying it around the house playing with it cutting you know cardboard boxes and stuff with it as one does and there are a few things i do like and don't like so a lot of what I mentioned is what I do like. Super fidgety, super fun, and it is very, very slicey. One thing that I'm not the largest fan of is the smock's um, kind of peculiar ergonomics. There's this really large portion in the middle of the blade that I feel is very hard to use because the ergonomics naturally make your hand want to rest here, but I really dislike having my hand here because it feels and is physically very far away from the cutting edge now you do have a forward finger troll that you can choke up to and this is oftentimes when i'm cutting with this blade how i will hold it but i really wish there was more contouring right here because naturally i feel such heavy inclination to want to put one of my fingers right here on this area and it is not it's just kind of like barren it's not really textured and it's not very easy to actually put your finger there and rest assured i don't think the design is conducive to having your fingers on this large area of the you know kind of weird ergonomics things that i do really enjoy about it are one the super slim factor and i think that this is the biggest point with the smock and why people like it and why it was made is that you actually have a pretty considerable overall sized blade I guess in comparison to something like this Manix obviously it is a little bit smaller than something like the Manix 2 the Manix 2 is not a you know small knife at all but you can see that it is around the same size as a Manix 2 but due to its nature of how they streamlined everything from the locking mechanism to the blade shape to even the flipper tab where you you have a flipper knife but as far as the spine goes there's nothing sticking out and protruding so everything is very slim very trim and that's i think the biggest thing that i love about the smock it's a super pocket friendly blade that is also very useful now i don't know if this is necessarily the most tactical blade because of this kind of reverse tonto slash modified warren's cliff or warren's cliff warren cliff um blade shape but it is plenty good enough for whatever you need to use it for and so overall i don't know it's a pretty cool blade for me it's not perfect for everything i do wish the spidey hole was a little bit bigger or maybe a little bit more well positioned under this opening or recession here but outside of that i really like it this is a blade that i'm definitely going to do some modifications to i don't know if i'm going to exactly get any aftermarket scales for it but i definitely want to change out a few things and uh, throw a custom pocket clip on here to make it a little bit more personalized but it's a really cool blade uh, honestly, I think it's pretty cool. 
paper. I honestly think it, it's pretty cool, works really well, and is super functional. So overall, um, as far as it goes, I don't know if there's too much more to say about it, but it is a pretty rad blade. And I'm definitely glad I got one. I've been looking at getting one for a while. I was super stoked to pick this one up. I got this one on secondary for a really good price. And uh, yeah, so I definitely like that. And yeah, happy that it all came together. So that is the Spyderco smock. This is one that I've been looking at getting for a little bit, or for a little while, and uh, just happy that it came together. What I will say I do like about this carbon fiber G10 is it still has that kind of look of carbon fiber, if you will, like in the light, it looks like carbon fiber, but it's almost kind of like, I think the best way to describe it is like a Minecraft texture because it's uh, almost like a low poly count look to it because it's like carbon fiber but like low poly if that would makes any sense to the the gamer crowd in the comments but uh overall it is really cool and i think that it adds an extra layer of not just durability but also texture like it has an extra layer of well g10 texture to it so it is cool to see that it has you know the properties of carbon fiber and the properties of g10 and i think that the primary properties of carbon fiber for those wondering in this case is lightweightness um, carbon fiber is very very lightweight but uh, VG10 gives it some added grip and I would say durability, but carbon fiber is pretty darn durable too. So anyways, guys, that is a look at the Spider Coast Smock. I feel like, like I said, a lot of people like pick these guys up and I think there's a lot of people that like them, want to get them, but I don't know, not a lot of people talk about them on the YouTubes. So that is my Spider Coast Smock. Smock, expect to see more of it. It is a pretty rad blade. And I will say too, I also really like this locking mechanism. I wish Spyderco would feature it on more knives. Maybe it's hard to pull off, but this kind of weird, you know, compression lock slash button lock situation is pretty darn cool. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless. And I'm